It's Friday, November 30th, 2018. Welcome to Pregame. I'm Zets, and we're about to talk about an upcoming Super Smash Brothers Melee event that I'm very much looking forward to, the PGH Neo Invitational and Arcadian 2018. Now, if you're not familiar, this is actually going to be the third installment of the series, which already boasts a rich history, having become one of the most iconic events in this part of the Midwest. This is in large part due to its creative format of hosting both an Arcadian and an Invitational to truly bring together our community. Now, if you don't yet know me, I'm a commentator and ranked Falco player in the state of Ohio, and I was actually born in Youngstown, Ohio, the very city that will be hosting this weekend's event. Now, I was very fortunate to be asked to commentate the Arcadian portion of this event, and thus, this past week, I've been researching some of the up-and-coming names to better prepare myself. Once I started doing that, I actually became increasingly excited about this upcoming event, and thus, I created this video, with the focus being highlighting the eight players that I think have the best shot of winning it all this weekend. I'm essentially going to share how I would see the events based on the respective resumes of these eight players, and I hope you enjoy the pregame. Rounding out the bottom of my suggested top eight is Harry, a Fox player from PGH. Harry is a name I've definitely heard before, but it took me a bit of research to assess his position. I reached out to Pittsburgh community correspondent and member of both Critical Hit Esports and Wallhack Aimbot Esports, Jada, for more information. Jada reported that he's a fox, plays super weird, uses tech, but people almost treat playing him like playing Borp. I'd say he was a top Arcadian like six months ago, but pretty sure he hasn't really been playing a ton. He beat me this summer, and he's beaten people like me, Waffle, Majers, and Spinda. Now, as it seems, Harry has in fact been quite inactive. His second most recent event per Smash GG was all the way back in April at the most recent installment of PGH's Fight Pit series, where he got 49th being upset in losers by Rhyme. Now, taking stats off of the lower half of PGH's PR is certainly respectable for an unranked player, but to what extent will Harry's inactivity affect his performance this weekend? Well, his most recent event was actually just two weekends ago at PGH's Exercise Informality, where he did suffer a quote-unquote bad loss before the bracket to his pool's third seed, Rodney. Now, it's clear that Harry does seem capable of doing well and may even have marginally better wins than others I have higher on my list, but his inactivity and inconsistency cement him at 8th for now. On to number 7. So everybody in the Midwest knows who the real thing is. Top Midwest Falco from Northeast Ohio. Well, his brother Figment also plays the bird, and while he might not yet have as much name recognition as real thing, this weekend could very well be an excellent opportunity for Figment to really make a name for himself. I mean, anybody who's played the guy will tell you that he's entirely capable of beating any Arcadian entrant. Having said that, I do hesitate to put him higher on my list, and here's why. He has beaten Dempt, Two Frames, and Free Balloon Day, all ranked Ohio players, so he definitely has some wins, but you have to go all the way back to July and August to find them. He did attend both Shine and the Big House 8 since then, but had lukewarm performances at both. His most recent local and monthly results show Figment meeting but never really exceeding expectations. Again, Figment surely has the potential to do well here, but so does everybody else, and the rest of this list simply have more impressive resumes, in my opinion. Figment at 7. All right, number six, I'm going to have to go with Jeff Fuel. This is a fast faller guy, Fox Falcon main, ranked fifth in West Virginia. Now, Ohio and West Virginia haven't really traveled to one another all that much, so I don't know Jeff Fuel personally. Fortunately, I know somebody who does. That's right, we're yet again deferring to PGH's favorite anime lover, Jada, who tells us, Jeff doesn't play a ton, but he's still solid. He kind of bodied Majersk Whoa. when they played. He's still a fave to get top eight. Now, Jeff Yule is ranked fairly high in West Virginia, so at first glance it might seem like I'm placing him a bit low here, but keep in mind, their PR was released all the way back in the spring, and Jeff hasn't been terribly active recently. He did, in all fairness, have a pretty impressive loser's run in late September at Almost Heaven, which is where he beat Majersk, along with Mothman and Answer, who's apparently fringe West Virginia PR. I do believe Jeff Yule should be a fave to still get top 8, but he's not even actually the most impressive West Virginia player entering the Arcadian. I've got Jeff Yule at 6. We're almost halfway there, and for number 5, I've got a PGH Marth that you might not have heard of, and to be frank, Crike is one name that I was not at all familiar with when I first started researching this event. The first thing I noticed about Crike was how he and I actually got the same place quite recently at PGH's Exercise Informality. With 61 entrants and a fairly top-heavy distribution of skill, 
Crike's ninth place here is of the more impressive single results I've come across in my research. A reliable source also recently told me that Crike narrowly missed the PGHPR released just earlier this month by one single spot. Yes, Crike is effectively 11th in PGH. Now, ironically, just last month at the Invasion, Crike eliminated PGH's official 10th best player, none other than, you guess it, Majersk, in a Game 5 set. Looking back, his results from September seem a bit more indicative of his average, but this month is on a hot streak right now, which is why I'm putting Crike at number 5. The first player I'd see to make winner's semis would be the most impressive West Virginia player entering the event, a fox main named Belgish. Now, kind of like Figment, you're probably more familiar with this dude's brother. That's Kale Money, head West Virginia TO and Solid Falco, ranked third in the state. And if you haven't heard of Belgish yet, no one can really blame you because as far as I can tell, there's literally no footage of this guy's play online, which is unlike anybody else on my list. So what do we know about this guy? Well, not even a year ago, he was still unranked in West Virginia. He first appeared on their PR in the eighth position this past spring. But like I mentioned earlier, that PR is getting a bit outdated. And Belgish's results now paint a prettier picture than 8th in West Virginia. In the past month alone, Belgish has taken at least two sets off of players ranked higher than him on their PR. And when I said Jeff Fuel isn't the most impressive West Virginia entrant, it's largely because Belgish has 3-0'd him the past two times they've met. Jada even told me he thinks Belgish may just win the event, and I won't argue against that possibility. We do have every reason to believe that Belgish will wind up closer to the top of West Virginia's next PR, but with absolutely no footage out there and little to no cross-region results to examine, I hesitate to see them higher than fourth for now. And here we are, top three. These are serious contenders to take the event. For third, I've got to go with Northeast Ohio's premier Mario main, Small Hands Brian. And I know what you're probably thinking. How the heck can I justify seeding a Mario you barely heard of third at this? But listen... In the past few months, Small Hands Brian has been quietly taking more names than most people realize. So think about this. Excluding Big House, he's scored an upset win at every monthly or regional he's attended since the end of July. And by the way, I'm talking five events. So let's start from the start here. July 28th, Columbus is super smashed the stadium. He 2-0's the 8th best player in Cincinnati, Mark Soul, a Fox main. And yeah, yeah, I get it. Since he's got Cal, and that's kind of it. So let's keep going. A week later, he goes to Kent, Ohio's No Loafing 2, and 2-0's Figment in Pools. All right. Next month, Champaign, Illinois' Show Me Your Moves 19. He makes top 64 bracket by beating the 10th best player in St. Louis. Now he's on a bit of a roll. Three weeks later, he attends a relatively large Kent, Ohio monthly, gets second out of 42 by double eliminating two frames, the Pikachu ranked sixth in Neo. Finally, last month, he heads to MDVA for the script and 3 is the ninth best player in Delaware. Now, he didn't have the best big house, but only two people on the list even made it to day two, and they're both higher than small hands anyway. Looking at that resume, it's undeniable that small hands is becoming impressively consistent with Mario of all characters, and... I understand he's going to have to fight through a ton of Foxes and Cheeks and Marts, but don't forget that by now, Small Hands is going into these matchups knowing them exponentially better than his opponents. He's not my pick to win the event, but he's damn near close at number three. All right, number two. We're now talking about a huge favorite to take it this weekend, and yet again, it's a player that most viewers probably have not heard of. I first heard of this guy while discussing seeding for the event with Carol, who encouraged me to look into Neo's boulders, telling me that he's, quote, a beast, probs the fave to win, but he mains DK. I then stumbled onto one recording of him playing at a Neo local in late 2017, which featured an interesting explanation from the commentators. They were explaining how the event was only his fourth tournament ever, yet at his literal first tournament, he beat two frames. Now, that's what puzzled me. He's been attending events for about a year now, and I still haven't heard of him, so you think that his results must have been generally unremarkable during that time, but if you thought that, you could not be more wrong. Those that have heard of Boulders probably saw him on stream at Aegis. Here he can be seen upsetting Dempt in pools to make it to loser's side of top 64, and if that wasn't impressive enough for a seemingly rando Donkey Kong, he then went on to beat both Esquire and MB Smash, both well-respected high-level Ohio threats. This run is definitely of the most impressive we've talked about thus far, but Boulders was just getting started. The only other results I found for Boulders were for two majors, Super Smash Con and the Big House 8. 
at SmashCon, Boulders earned a very strong placing of 129th out of over a thousand entrants. And to my knowledge, Boulders is the only player we've discussed so far to ever make it to day two of a major. But last October, he did it a second time at the Big House 8, this time earning 193rd place. Before being knocked out of the Big House's bracket, Boulders ended up taking Ohio top player Fizzle Boy to game three. And interestingly, just two rounds later, Fizzle was upset 2-1 by Dayton, Ohio's resident Donkey Kong, 2-Tran. So despite Boulder's insane accomplishments over this past year, I think it is safe to say that 2-Tran's current title of best Donkey Kong in Ohio should remain intact for just a while longer. But to what extent would an Arcadian victory shake up such a debate over best Ohio Donkey Kong? A victory here would certainly start the conversation. Despite little data, there's no denying that Boulder's performances have consistently been on another level from anybody else we've looked at so far, but I just can't justify giving him the edge over my pick for the favorite to win this event this upcoming weekend. All right, without further ado, my pick to win the 2018 PGH Neo Arcadian is, without question, well-traveled veteran ice climbers main Kezup from Neo. And let me just address this from right out the gate. It's hardly controversial to claim that Wobbling and Ice Climbers by extension are particularly good at the mid-level and below, but that had way less to do with Kezup's spot here than you might think. His results have objectively earned him this spot on my list through their own merits, so stay with me here. Now, he's got a win over Spinda from September, but back in July, he also attended a few New York locals, one of them being Smashed Out Melee number 53, where he secured a 2-1 upset victory over Swift Base. Now, you might think of Swift Base as just an old-school Marth, but he's really not. Swift Base got 97th at Shine 2017, certainly a more impressive major placing than we'd expect any Arcadian entry to get. But what if I told you that last August, Kezup in fact earned none other than 97th place out of over 1,000 entrants at Super Smash Con? He happened to upset Warmer, the 6th best player in Connecticut during the loser's run, and... Just like Boulders, Kezup also made it to day two of the Big House 8, tying him with 193rd place at that event. At this point, I think it's clear that no one is even remotely comparable to Kezup and Boulders. I mean, they're both the only two to ever see day two of a major, and they both did it twice. However, Kezup's superior placing at Super Smash Con, and especially his signature win over Swift Base, by far the best win of any entrant, gives him the edge. So I've got Kezup as my favorite to win this entire thing this Saturday. So there you have it, folks. Now, before the end of the video, I do want to point out that regardless of whether you agree with my top three, they're all from Neo. Eggnog and Spy were quick to poke fun at PGH and Neo for not yet defending either of their two prior Arcadians, but from where I sit, this looks like Neo's year. If you can't make it, be sure to tune into the stream this Saturday. I'll be on the mic along with veteran Puff Man and former MIOM Top 100 player 4% to deliver this must-see broadcast. Be sure to tell me who you think is going to win the event in the comments or on Twitter. Thanks for tuning into the pregame.